Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Tampa Bay Lightning throwback 2009 franchise mode here in NHL 23. So in last episode, we had free agency and we also made a pretty big trade to try and get our team to be better because last year, obviously, we went to the first round of the playoffs. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like that trade and all that kind of worked out really that much in our favor in a sense because we are 17-20-4 and at January the 8th and not looking too good uh yeah we are around 500 but if we look at the playoff race at the moment uh it is going to be a very steep hill to climb to get back into the playoff hunt so i think what we're going to probably be doing in this episode is making a few tweaks like getting rid of a few players that way we have like maybe more draft picks for this upcoming draft we could use those prospects we draft to eventually trade away or something like that to bolster the roster for next year or we could just sign good free agents next off season uh, but we are very close to the end of the series already just because NHL 24 is literally like a couple weeks away. So as you can see at the moment though, we are the 14th best team in the NHL at the moment or at least in the Eastern Conference I should say. Uh, only one point up on the Caps but we do have five games in hand which is good so we should hypothetically not be the worst team. But you can see the last playoff team, which right now is Ottawa, is 11 points above us, and they have the exact same amount of games played. So it's very unlikely that we're able to get back into this playoff hunt. They're at a 59.8 point percentage. We're at a 46.3, which is the second worst still. So I don't think there's any way this team could get back into the playoffs at the moment. So we might as well offload a couple players that are pending free agents. That way we can at least get something for them instead of just having to let them walk. But anyways, before we get into that, I do have quite a few comments to go over. So the first one is from Michael Dose, who says the coach needs to go and you need a better goaltender. Uh, D minus goalie co uh, coach, coach grade is garbage too. So he's saying that would change our coach, which I think I'm probably going to be doing for sure. That's going to be one of our changes, but I honestly don't know if it's really worth it at this stage. Like maybe we may wait till the off season instead. I don't really know. Because if we wait till the off season instead, maybe that would be better because we want to kind of tank the rest of the season anyways. Um, but uh, this guy, maybe we let him go. I don't know. There's not really any other coaches out there right now at the moment, is there? That we were looking at. There is that 67. There's a 70%. And he works with... Does he work better with Stamkos than our current coach? Does our current coach not work with Stamkos and that's why he's underperforming? Yeah, that's probably it. That's probably the reason why. So we will probably make a coaching change here shortly. I think I'll probably end up having to go for the 70. Even though he's a defense first coach. Yeah, I think I might go for LeBlanc as their head coach. Just to maybe test waters and see how a new coach does with this team. The next two comments are from Flame Husky. The first one says Luongo and a Ducks is just plain wrong, and I totally agree. It's kind of weird seeing Roberto Luongo sign in Anaheim of all teams. Uh, let's take a look actually on how he's doing just for some little extra content, because why not? How is Luongo doing in Anaheim? 90 overall. He is playing pretty well actually. Yeah, 19, uh, 10 and 3 with a 917 save percentage. Yeah, he's actually been swimmingly and pretty good for uh, a high overall goaltender, which normally doesn't happen that often. He has never made the playoffs, but will he get to make the playoffs with the Anaheim Ducks is the question. And also Flame Husky says, here's my recommendation. Sack the coach and do some hockey trades to shake things up. I'd bring in Halak and some new wingers. Prospel should go all out alongside St. Louis. Two sets for sure, but they're dropping in overall, so trade them while they stop value left. The new coach should be a Ford's coach who could bring in some uh, much needed scoring. I'd ignore the overall fit since X Factors bring all the line chem anyways. So I uh, disagree with a few things. I disagree with uh, moving out Prospel and St. Louis right now because, yeah, St. Louis is a pending free agent. Uh, but the thing is with moving out St. Louis, uh, he, well, he obviously deserves to retire with this club pretty much, but uh, we don't have enough time to worry about players dropping off in overall because I don't think he's going to necessarily retire this year. We don't have the time to just worry that he's going to drop down to an 83. We only have this season and probably all next season, and then we are done this series. And then we won't have another throwback till uh, NHL 24. So I don't think it really matters about moving those guys, to be honest. Um, but I do agree about sacking a coach and then looking to change maybe our goaltending a bit. 
That might be something we do more in the offseason is find ourselves a new goaltender, but we are going to definitely be trading away uh, probably Mike Smith, I'd say, out of our two goaltenders, and we could just call up like Kari Ramo from the minors. And then the next two comments are from Saturn Otaku. The first one says Thomas Fleischmann signed in Florida where he played in IRL, so that's need two. And then uh, he was talking about the team. He says, as far as this team goes, maybe do a fire sell, uh, sale and tank for Cooch. Like, yeah, that's basically our motto. We're not going to fire sell everybody because we don't want to be risking uh, probably next year's season as well because we want to be a good playoff team potentially for our last season. Uh, but since Nikita Kucherov is the first overall pick in this year's draft, there is a there's a good chance that uh, he'd be worth obviously uh, quite a bit. He's going to be probably I think a low overall out of the draft if I remember right. No, it says he's NHL ready, so he might be like in the low 70s. But I think I didn't make him like NHL ready out of the draft because he obviously wasn't IRL. Uh, so he might be a little bit lower, but uh, he's still going to be a fantastic player. And then even if he's like a 70 overall or something like that, I could easily play him in our top six or next to somebody like Stamkos if we end up drafting him, that is. Getting lucky with the draft lottery is a different uh, animal in its own. The next two comments are from Leesfan161 who says, Seeing the Atlanta Thrashers do well is weird. It's not really that weird because in 2007 they were actually a pretty solid team, but they just couldn't find a way to win in the playoffs. And then also Leafsfan says, Looks like Atlanta knew that they would be moving to Winnipeg if they didn't do well this season, which is true because considering this is the 2010-11 season, this would be the last year of the Atlanta Thrashers. And finally, the last comment is from Tyler G1994, who says, "I would try and go to, uh, go for it next year. Fire the coach and uh, find a replacement in the off season. Get top pair demon and maybe a goalie improvement." So uh, he's saying the fire the coach, and then uh, find a replacement in the off season, not right now. Then get a top pairing defenseman and maybe a goaltending improvement. So. Um, a lot to do with this team. I think we're probably going to obviously make that coaching adjustment. So we're probably going to fire our head coach. Just let like a, one of our other coaches take over for the rest of the season. Then in the off season, we'll probably end up making some big changes to our roster with new additions. But we're probably going to be still trading away two players at least in this episode. And the players I'm leaning towards trading away are Brian Gionta. Yes, we did just sign him not too long ago, but he is a pending UFA, and I can't justify spending more money on him, so we are going to probably trade him away, and we are probably also going to flip away Mike Smith, since he actually is not older than Craig Anderson. I always thought he was. Hmm. I guess it depends on what value I get for either of them, but uh, one of them will probably get traded away, and then we could call up Ramo as the backup, so... We are going to make at least a couple trades that should help us in terms of the tank bowl and hopefully landing ourselves Nikita Kucherov. If we don't get Kucherov, Gabriel Landeskog would be a great player. Same with Nugent Hopkins, that type of thing. So regardless, it would be nice to get a high up pick and somebody that could help out our team as soon as possible. So let's uh, go ahead first and make that coaching change. So we are going to go ahead here and we are going to actually let me take a look first at the coaches because you guys are saying offensive coaches but there's not really any offensive there's a few generalists and then the one I was looking at was defensively minded uh, let me see 67 on that generalist 68 on that defenseman yeah Sylvan Apple actually might be the best bet he's actually a pretty good fit with Stamkos hmm I wasn't going to make a coaching adjustment like this season necessarily because it might hurt us right now, but I think I'm going to go for Apple as our NHL head coach. We're going to offer him some more money, and then I'm going to uh, fire our current head coach. Let's do that. Let's go back here, and we will fire Andrews. So thank you for your time here, man. I normally don't fire coaches mid-season, but this is the only one we're going to have to do for now. And for now, we'll probably uh, promote our goalie coach as an interim head coach. Just because I don't really care. It helps us tank a little bit. And now we got to get into these trades. So these trades should be interesting to see what we could get in return. So let's go uh, find trade here. Alex Tanga is currently still injured. But what could we get for somebody like Brian Gianta, who's a pending free agent? I want to get draft picks, preferably. Rasmuslav Klesl on a third-round pick, and Brett McLean, no thank you. Mike Commissera, Klesl on a sixth, no thanks. It's only Edmonton that wants him, apparently. Visnovsky a third, and McLennan. 
I don't mind Lubomir Vizhnovsky quite a bit. Sheldon Sure is also not bad, but the con the contract is the problem. I don't want to be uh, having to be tied up with that type of cat hit. Oh, oh, wow. So, ironically enough, Tyler mentioned about bringing in, or not Tyler, actually that was Husky that brought it, uh, up, bringing in Halak. Well, we did get thrown an offer for Yaroslav Halak. And it is honestly probably the best thing we could do. We get ourselves a young starting goaltender for next season. Because we're going to be training away a goaltender anyways in this episode. We uh, get Roman Hammerlick for one year, which kind of sucks cap-wise. But, uh, I mean, Hammerlick was drafted by the Lightning very high overall. Like, I think first or second. So, we get Hammerlick, so a defenseman for one year. We let him go to free agency or trade him away as well. I don't know. But we still get in a defenseman. We get Yarrow Halak and an extra third round pick. And Gionta goes to the Habs where he played in real life. Orders Willie Mitchell, Jared Smithson in a third. I like this Halak one a lot. I like this Halak one a lot. I wouldn't really like taking on Hammerlick, but it's only for a year. We would be over the salary cap, so we would have to immediately change, uh, do the goaltending trade, which we're probably going to do. So, um, how is Hammerlick even, anyways? He's an 83 overall. Not picking up as much offense as he did earlier in his career, but yeah, I think Halak's kind of struggling a bit, looks like, in Montreal, but still, it would be nice to have ourselves a young goaltender that's only 25. He is probably a pending UFA, so I am going to have to negotiate a contract with him right away, but I think we're going to do this deal. So Roman Hammerlick, Halak, a third for Gionta, and Adam Party gets put down on waivers, which is okay. If he gets claimed, so be it. Uh, we'll go to roster moves here. Did it send him down already? No, it did not. Let's uh, send down Adam Party. So yeah, we'll send down Party, I think, or should we send down Carsons? Probably Party would make the most sense because we don't really need him as much at the moment. Uh, I'd be over to salary cap. Hmm. I could just wave Hammerlick. Oh yeah, this puts us in a real bad cap bind right now. We're over by $216,000 only. Does Downey get throw waivers? He does. Oh man. Is there anybody that would be okay with waving? Let's put Mark Antoine Pouliot on waivers. That doesn't even help it apparently. You'd be required to fix your fines. We'd be still over to salary cap. So I'll send down Pouliot and I will send down Downey. That would work, okay. What if I send down Pouliot and Party? Okay, so we might have two players get claimed, but that's honestly okay, because I would probably let these guys go in the offseason anyways. So let's see if they clear waivers. They cleared. They cleared successfully. That's actually better than I thought. So there we go. Let's just go best initial lines for a second here. That way we can make ourselves that other trade that will free up more cap space, and then we could call up Pouliot and Party again. So there's our first trade. Our second trade, we now have three goaltenders under contract. What can we get for guys like Mike Smith and Craig Anderson is the question. Can I get anything actually solved? I need to trade away at least one of them, though. Third and a fourth, that honestly might be the best option because we're not trying to take back players if possible. A third and Thornton. Let's see. Uh, Arizona's interested in him. I honestly should just do that, but Toby Peterson's making money, and I don't want to bring in money, really. Yeah, I don't really want to bring in money. Arizona has a lot of interest in him, though, which is kind of cool. I think I'll just trade him straight up for draft picks. So, hmm, let's give him the Columbus, because Buffalo probably already has Ryan Miller. So, Mike Smith, good luck in Columbus. And, yeah, pull out would get called up. That's okay. Roster moves. We'll call up Pouliot. Boom. Since now we actually have the cap space, let's go best on that. How much players do we have in the NHL? Do we have still room to call up Adam Party or not? And do I want to still try and trade away Roman Hammerlick? Because <clears throat> I honestly could try and trade away Roman Hammerlick. So. We still have one roster spot up here, so I can call up Adam Party, which is good. We'll call him up. And then I might look to honestly just flip Hammerlick right away. Because he's not really a part of my future plans. He's not a bad defenseman, don't get me wrong, but he's going to be dropping off. He's a pending free agent. Doesn't really make sense, I think. 
to uh, keep him up here. So let me see what we could get potentially for somebody like Roman Hammerlick. Because he's got okay value. Yeah, he's got pretty solid value. So let's see what we could get for Hammerlick. <laughs> what? Okay, this doesn't make any sense. The only team interested in Hammerlick is Montreal. What the heck? Okay, well, that's with an open trade block. Let's just um, keep Hammerlick for now, I guess. I think. Let me just take a look at our defensive core. Four, five, six, seven. And I don't want to scratch any of those guys. I I got to trade away Hammerlick now. I just got to find a trade for him. I'll trade him away for like a couple picks. Doesn't really matter at this stage. A lot of wheeling and dealing in this episode so far. Looks like most teams would be over the salary cap though. If they brought in Roman Hammerlick. Which is why there's not a lot of interest in him. The only team that did have cap space so far is Nashville and Ottawa. And both of them don't have any interest in him. St. Louis as well. Hmm. Guess I'm going to have to trade him to a team that doesn't have interest. Let's see. Is there a cheaper defenseman that I can mold for next year? Actually, maybe not even a defenseman. Let's just go for draft picks if possible. Uh, third round pick. Hmm. Let me actually go to a different team. Let me go to somebody that like Nashville. That has second rounders. We'll take Vancouver second rounder for straight up for Roman Hammerlick if you want Nashville. Let's see if this works. Rejected. Okay. Um. Hmm. Interesting. Trying to find a way just to shed Hammerlick. I might be stuck with them on. We'll see at this rate, but I still would like to try and get rid of him if we can. Florida would be over the salary cap, of course. Hmm. Yeah, we might honestly have to hold on to Hammerlick a little bit longer. Yeah, we'll probably put him on a trading block, but I don't know if I'm going to actually get any offers for him. But uh, there's the most of our trades so far. We'll put Hammerlick on the block if he's not, which he isn't. Just to see if we can get any offers for him. Because right now I don't really want to keep Hammerlick in the lineup. Uh, we'll also put Ryan Malone on the block. That's another guy I was thinking about trading away because his cap it is just too much. But we'll see if we get any offers that are intriguing to us. Okay, let's uh, continue to simulate, I think. Actually, let me go to contracts for a second. I know he hasn't played a single game for us, but we need to have him for next season. Uh, let's give you already a one-year extension there, Halak, so you're here for our last season. I don't care if you play bad or not. We just need to hold on to you probably for next year's too, so... That was a good trade, I think. Bringing in Yaroslav Halak, I think that should be nice to have for next season, permitted he wants to sign here, which he probably will, because it's only for one more year. Apple declined. So we didn't even get that new coach yet. Maybe I'll wait till the off season to get that new coach. I don't really know. Uh, let's get, uh, let's see. I have the lines on best lines right now. Tangay need, definitely needs to be in. Um, it has Stamkos on the top line. We could honestly try that. I don't see a problem for not trying it. Uh, we will take out uh, Carson's out of the lineup, though. Alex Tangay needs to come back in. Actually, let's just go best lines here. See what the coach is thinking. Um, yeah, that's decent. Tangay, LeCavalier, Malone, St. Louis, Stamkos, Prospel. Okay, why not? Why not run with that? So who's scratched in? Ozzy Vanninen. I don't like that Vanninen is scratched, but it honestly might have to happen until the trade deadline. But uh, let's just keep this uh, goalie coach as our head coach for now because it's helping us lose a bunch of games. And at this rate, we are not going to make the playoffs, so might as well just not get ourselves a head coach till the off season. I think it makes more sense that way. Yeah, we're now at the bottom of the division. The Caps have passed us, but we still have five games in hand on them, which is pretty crazy. Uh, let's go to the 28th. See what we're looking like at that point. But yeah, we're definitely not going to be a playoff team, which is good. Uh, two second-round picks for Keith Yandel, a fourth. And Toby Peterson is seventh, no thanks. If Keith Yandel had multiple years, that would be kind of intriguing, but second-rounders... 
I wouldn't say they're mo the most valuable thing in this. Hammerlock's been injured, so at least I'll get Vanden into the lineup, I think. Uh, now Vanden has been injured, but at least we have Adam Party to take that spot. And Hammerlock actually was just coming right back into the lineup, so never mind. <laughs> okay, so 23, 32, and 10. We are currently one of the worst teams in the NHL, which is good. I hope we end up getting Kucherov. That would be pretty dope. But let's see if there's been any trades so far before the deadline. No, there hasn't been. Yeah, there has not been a trade before the deadline. Hmm. Interesting. Let's uh, go to past the deadline because I think I'm not making any more changes to this team. I'll wait till the offseason. I know I could technically capitalize on St. Louis' value, like some of you guys were saying, but I don't think it's worth it. Uh, let's just go into the trade deadline anyways and uh, just see what's on the block just for the fun of it. So the big name on the block is Jonathan Taves because he's still an RFA holding out. We have Martin St. Louis on the block, which is kind of funny. I didn't put him on the block, but still the AI must have. Jeff Carter, Andre Markov, UC Jokinen, Jokin Hecht, Simone Gagne, Zach Parise is on the block. Damn. Brad Richards, Justin Williams. Those are your top 10 players on the block this uh, season. Huh, okay, let's get out of this because we aren't going to make any more changes to this team. I could have traded away Hammerlick actually there, never mind, but oh well. We'll just let Hammerlick walk. I don't really need to worry about it. Or I could bring him back still, so. Not going to claim Hutchinson because we already got a lot of defenders. Let's take a look at the trades that happened at the trade deadline. It probably would have made sense to trade Hammerlick there, but I honestly didn't think about it till it was too late again. Uh, I'm just overtired, so. But here's the trade deadline trades for 2010-11. Florida has acquired Scott Hartnell in a fourth-round pick for two second-rounders. St. Louis has acquired former St. Louis Blue, Corey Stillman, in a third for some prospect, a second, and another prospect. Ottawa has acquired Dennis Grubeshkov from Phoenix for two seconds. Washington has got Patrick O'Sullivan, Freddie Schusterman in a seventh from Edmonton for Paul Mara in two seconds. Toronto's acquired John Erskine in a fifth for a second, a fourth, and a prospect. That's a lot to give up for John Erskine. Montreal's acquired Jay McClement a third and a sixth from St. Louis for Josh George is in a fourth. So Josh George is getting moved out, which is kind of crazy because that guy was a very good defensive defenseman, at least from what I've heard analytically. Columbus has acquired Eric Belanger for two, or not two seconds, a second and a prospect. Calgary's acquired a prospect and a four for Mark Giordano, who heads to Atlanta. So Atlanta's loading up. Kind of weird seeing Giordano getting moved at this point. He must be a pending UFA or something. Detroit has acquired Mike Medano and Freddie Modine for Montreal for a second and a third. So Mike Medano going to the team he actually retired with in his last year of his career. Hopefully he doesn't get benched this time because I think I heard rumors about him getting benched or something in his final few games or something weird like that. But... That's kind of neat. Uh, Minnesota's acquired former Minnesota Wild Jose Theodore in a fourth rounder for some prospect of fourth and another prospect. Colorado's acquired Andre Pavlik from Atlanta for Scott Hinn in a fourth in even odds. Ratis even odds, the Latvian enforcer. But uh, hmm, Atlanta's definitely loading up here. Uh, even though they did just trade away Pavlik, which is kind of weird. Uh, Phoenix has acquired a second and a third for Keith Yandel, who heads to Toronto. So Toronto gets a very good offensive defenseman that can't play defense. Uh, the Rangers acquired two prospects for Bobby Holik and Matt Walker, who head to Boston. Uh, Chicago has acquired Miroslav Shatan and uh, for two sec or not two seconds, a second and a third round pick. So Shatan off to Chicago. Uh, San Jose has acquired Robert Nilsson and Mike Komisarek for three prospects. And that's all the trades. So quite a bit of trades. A lot of players going to teams they actually played for, which is cool, like Theodore, Mike Medano. And then you have some really weird ones like Mark Giordano getting dealt, which is pretty crazy at this stage. So there is the trade deadline for 2010-11. I wonder who's going to be the best team in the league at the end of the season. Right now, the best team in the NHL is the Atlanta Thrashers. So the Atlanta Thrashers might be a first-round exit, do what they did in real life a lot, or they might be a uh, Stanley Cup contender this season. Who knows? 
But let's get the rest of the season done with because we know we're not going to be a playoff team at this rate unless for some reason we win every game remaining. <laughs> we do not need to claim Sammy Paulson on waivers. No, thank you. Uh, let's go continue because Vanden was depth anyways. Uh, no, we're not claiming Matthew Guerrero on waivers. I'm not claiming anybody on waivers. And Stamkos has been injured with a mild concussion. Damn, that sucks. Let's just go replace player for now. And now he's back. At least it was only for a few days. Martins Carsons was getting top line ice time. That's pretty dope. So there you go. Stamkos is back in. He's jumped up to an 88, which is good. So maybe he's playing better alongside St. Louis and Prospel. And maybe the problem is that we have Le Cavalier kind of overshadowing him in a sense. Like I thought he would be a good mentor for Stamkos, but maybe he's just overplaying him or something. I don't know. So we finished with 65 points, 27, 44, and 11. That's a big fall off from last year. We are tied for the worst team in the NHL with the Dallas Stars. So the question is, do we win the draft lottery this year and get ourselves Nikita Kucherov? Let's take a look at player stats still around the league and the standings and all that stuff. Wrap up this regular season and we will take a look at the draft lottery and stuff like that in this episode. Even if it does make this episode a bit long, but... Let's take a look at the entire league standings. The best team in the NHL was the Columbus Blue Jackets. Damn, so we sent Mike Smith to the team that's uh, won the President's Trophy. Didn't expect Columbus to finish first place in 2010-11, but here we are. Anaheim was the second best team, the Rangers third, and then you have Minnesota, and Atlanta was number five. Hmm. And then, yep, we were actually technically the worst team in the NHL based on uh, RO, not ROW, actually. It's based on wins because we had one less win than the Dallas Stars. So we have technically the best odds to get Kucherov, which means we're not going to get him. And we're going to somehow get, like, the third overall pick. But let's go. That's quite the fall off, though, because we go from being a team that makes the playoffs to the worst team in the league, even though we technically made our team a lot better at the beginning, which is weird. We were the second worst offensive team in the league. And we were the second worst defensive team in the league. We are not, not the worst. The worst was the Flyers. Uh, power play percentage. Our power play was one of the best in the league despite being dead last in the NHL. Interesting. Penalty kill percentage was probably like mid-table, to be honest. Um, let's see. Anything else intriguing? We are 15, 21, and 5 on home ice, 12, 23, and 6 on the road. Oof. Yeah, rough season for this team. Let's take a look at these player stats. See who did what. So, Lecavalier, 69 points, minus 15. Jeez. Stamko is only 42 points, so never mind. He didn't do well since being put on that top line. Minus 37. Stamko is having a really rough time. Like, he didn't even do better than last year, but he missed one game. So, Kind of had around the same amount of point totals, but his plus minus is just getting worse and worse each year. I don't like his defense at all. <laughs> don't know why he's playing that bad. Uh, Gotch, 26 points. Pouliot, 8 points. A lot of pl a bad plus minus on his team. Brosman Malone, both like 50 plus points. Same with Tange. Uh, Pettinger, 27 points. St. Louis, 67 points. Kopeski had 38 points. That's a lot more than expected. Uh, Downey and Hall had 19 each, and Carson's had two goals in eight games. He was our only plus forward in plus minus. But then again, he was a depth option, so it makes sense. Defensively, Curtis Foster led the way with 31 points. Hammerlick had 27. 12 of them with us, minus 13 over that span. So, yeah, I think Hammerlick is not going to come back. Mazaros was terrible this year. He has definitely fallen off a lot. Wow. That's actually realistic, though, like I was mentioning, I think, last episode to IRL, because he would he had, like, a really good rookie season IRL in terms of points, but then his points fell off quite a bit, so pretty realistic. Uh, Niskin, 18 points, minus 38. Damn, man. A plus minus on this team is tragic. I didn't think Matt Niskanen would be that bad, because IRL, he was a really good plus minus defenseman. Wow. Well, this is interesting. Goaltending wise, how did Halak do with us? Uh, he was actually not bad. I mean, the save percentage was better than in Montreal. The goals against was higher, obviously, because we're worse. But that win loss ratio is absolutely terrible. But it's probably because of the coach. But obviously, like I said, we'll change that in the offseason. Did he accept his extension? I didn't see if he did. 
Uh, Craig Anderson also, eh. So unfortunately guys, my Elgato froze at that point in the video, so basically all the retirements and stuff like that you will not see, which is unfortunate, and player stats for the league I think is also going to be completely erased. Um, let me take a look and see. Uh, not fully, but there will be some of the guys that retired not shown here, but you can see the best player in the league was Henrik Zetterberg, Gabrik letting goals of 68, that type of thing. In terms of defense, you can see Andre Markov was the best defenseman. The best goaltender was Luongo in terms of wins, but the best in save percentage was uh, Nick Backstrom. He also had the best goals against average. So there is the goalie stats and the best rookie this year. Obviously, this has now changed, but the person that won the rookie of the year was a generated guy. So it doesn't really matter too much. And since I can't show you the retirements, I can't remember who actually retired or not. Uh, but we didn't lose anybody. Uh, but I think it was like Mike Medano was one of the biggest retirements pretty much this offseason. But there's the playoff tree and end up to winning, won the Stanley Cup in 2010-11. The New York Islanders end up winning over the San Jose Sharks who went to their second final of the series. And yeah, the Islanders went on a really good run. They were the eighth seeded team in the Eastern Conference, but they knocked out their division rivals in the New York Rangers. Then they knocked out Toronto, who won the Stanley Cup last year. They also knocked out Florida, and they knocked out the Sharks in the Cup Finals. Those uh, final 15 games, they won 12 of the 15, so 12-3 and three to win the Stanley Cup. Really crazy there. And I'll show you guys their roster as well, unless they dropped some players down already, which hopefully they did not. I hate that my Elgato freezes. It's not even due to any update issues or whatnot, so I'm probably going to have to try and use a different software when I record or something, because maybe it's just my Elgato software. But this was their cup winning team. I'm pretty sure most of it stayed the same. Nobody retired from this team. But there, in case you guys wanted to get a little bit of a picture on who actually won the Stanley Cup. So there is that. Uh, let me show you guys also the awards. I also, since we didn't get to that point, I want to let you guys know we have the second overall pick in this year's draft because we fell from 1 to 2. Dallas moved from 2 to 1, so... We could still try and trade up if we really want to, but I don't know how much value uh, Dallas is going to have on that first overall pick. So, And there's a lot of good players in this draft, so regardless, we're getting a good player for next season, which is nice. But is it going to make an impact for a team in this final season? Who really knows? <laughs> Who really knows? Um... Let me show you guys the contract situation, the progress reports, and the draft class. So, this is what we're working with in terms of players up for renewal. St. Louis is the big one. There's also Stamkos, but he's RFA, so we can at least just keep qualifying him probably. You also have like Foster, Hammerlick, who we brought in via that trade. Kopeski's a pending free agent. Same with Gotch, Klein, Hall, Pettinger, Party. Like, we can pretty much clean house and replace all these guys, but at the same time, a lot of the free agents are going to ask for a lot of money, probably. Uh, but I'd like to try and hold on to St. Louis, obviously, if we can. The rest of these guys, maybe we could expend some of them. Maybe we hold on to some of them for another season. But I don't know if we'll have the cap space. Also, goalie-wise, we have Anderson, Ramo, Helenius up for renewal. We do have Yaroslav Halak already signed for next season, so that is pretty good. So there's that. Uh, let's take a look at the progress reports. I will show you this. There's not really a lot of development. There is some really big drop-off, though, from Vakov Prospol, who dropped to an 82. Didn't expect him to drop off that much. Um, we also did get some uh, statistical growth, I think, from some guys like Kopetsky a bit. Uh, St. Louis dropped down to an 87, so he's not really the worst player in the world. But obviously he dropped down from, I think, like an 89-90. So he is slowly growing, or not growing, dropping off. Um, but yeah, our team is pretty old for, at this rate. We don't really have a lot of good young players. So that's where free agency would be nice to find somebody like that. But we only have like one season left, so it doesn't really matter too much at this stage. So there is all that goalie-wise in the AHL. Well, I'm getting a lot of growth from Turkov, which is nice, but it's going to be a little bit too late. <laughs> So there is that. Let me show you guys the draft class since we have the second overall pick. We also have Columbus's third round pick. But um, if we wanted to try and move up with Dallas to get Kucherov, he is the first overall pick, obviously, because he's a franchise player. But he looks like this. But since we have the second overall pick, we have probably one of the toughest decisions on who we want to draft. 
because we have Johnny Goudreau, who looks like this. He's really solid. We have Ola Turnstrom, who is a generated guy who looks like this. We have Gabriel Landeskog, who looks like this. We know he's a good power forward. We have Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who looks like that. Mika Zibanejad, who obviously would have pretty similar stats to these other guys. We don't know that, but I know that from making him. Uh, Jonathan Huberto, who looks like this. And Mark Scheifele, who looks like this. We also do have Dougie Hamilton, who looks really good. But it's going to be interesting to see who we decide on as the second overall pick. Because pretty much all these guys could go at number one or two. Actually, well, not maybe number one because Kucherov's franchise. But other than that, I think any of these guys are worth the second overall pick. I would probably lean towards uh, maybe Landis Cog since he's a bit more physical. Or maybe that Turnstrom guy. But I want to kind of go with somebody that's actually real in this sense. So it's a very tough decision. So if you guys could let me know on who you think we should take with that second pick, let me know. I would probably lean towards like Nugent Hopkins or uh, Johnny Goudreau. Because I think I make Goudreau a playmaker. So... He'd probably be nice to put next to like a stamp coast or something like that. So there is the draft class. Uh, final thing I wanted to show you guys, I think. Yeah, was that I updated the trading block a little bit again. So Ryan Malone has been thrown onto the block because he's making a lot of money still for a lot of terms. So if we wanted to free up some cap space in this offseason, moving Ryan Malone would probably be beneficial. Other than that, though. Uh, we should have a pretty solid roster going into next season. I do want to maybe move out a few more players and sign some good players in the free agency. Uh, but I honestly don't know where we should start looking to improve this team. Because we have one season left, pretty much. So we probably want to look to, um, I don't know, give ourselves the best te uh, team possible going into the uh, last season. If we don't win a Stanley Cup, it kind of sucks. But at the same time, I don't think it's going to happen. But um, it will be still cool to at least give ourselves another playoff opportunity. And uh, yeah, just kind of have a nice, fun little short series in that sense. But final thing I wanted to take a look at was the pending free agents around the league. Is there any big free agents this offseason? Potentially, let's go to UFAs. So the big one would be Patrice Bergeron. Wow, if Boston lets him go, that would be crazy. But him, Joe Thornton's pending free agent. Yeah, there's some pretty big names. At least in the center wise. Some of these guys will probably resign with the teams they were with, but we might be able to find some pretty good players again in the offseason to rework our team and maybe get ourselves a chance at being back into the playoffs again for the last season. Wow, this is just the centers and there's a lot of good ones. Rick Nash might be a penny free agent. Andrew Ladd, who recently retired in real life. Simone Gagne, he did t pl technically play for Tampa in 2010-11. And this we'd be going into 2011-12 at this point. But yeah, I think we'll be able to find some good players in the offseason to replace some of those guys that are currently on our roster. I just don't really know who I want to be letting go of. Right wing wise, the best is Milan Hayduke and Dustin Bufflin. Because Dustin Bufflin's a forward in this. <laughs> Interesting. I wonder if Chicago is going to get... Or what did I say? Chicago. Chicago is going to get into any trouble with their salary cap since Jonathan Taze was an RFA all year. It's going to be interesting. So there is that. Defensively, the best defenseman that could hit the free agencies. Uh, Zidane Chara and Sergei Gonchar again. Also Shea Weber. And Andre Markov, who just won a Norris. There is a legitimate chance this could be a very big free agent pool. I mean, a lot of these guys, like I said, could resign with their teams, but we might be able to find some really good players this offseason. J.S. Gare for goalies, Jimmy Howard, but we already have a goalie in Halak for next season. We kind of just need a backup for him. Which, I mean, there is Ben Bishop, but I don't know if he's going to get paid or not. Because I don't know if I'll bring back Craig Anderson. I might let him walk. Eric Erzberg would be fun too, just because Erzberg's the goat. <laughs> That's a Toskala. So there is that. Actually, let me take a look at uh, pending free agents that are just RFAs at the moment. Uh, not that we're going to qualify any RFAs, but there's a chance that there's going to be a lot of good RFAs that end up holding out for more money this offseason. 
So there is that. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Tampa Bay Lightning Throwback 2009 franchise mode. So I apologize about the video basically having to have a big cut in between just because of the fact um, I ended up losing like 14 minutes of footage because this friggin' Elgato thing. But hopefully it resolves itself or maybe, I'll, like I said, I'll try and use some other software and maybe that will help it work. Maybe it's just that software I'm using is a bit outdated. But I guess think that below and I'll see you guys next time.